time for all your binge-worthy pop culture news. Welcome to Up and Adam. Rick, Kelly. Hi. Hi, Hi how are you? Thank you for coming all this way. Oh my gosh, all Florida to California, we made it happen. Yes, you did. Okay. I'm yeah. impressed. I'm, I'm so really impressed. This. This, is, this is an interview I've been looking forward to for so long. And I had my fiance, Jason, who kind of ripped me a little bit because when we were talking, I was like, Kelly, you're one of the most controversial housewives. He's like, stop telling her that. <laughs> and I was like, no, this is straight to the point. Kelly knows. Yeah, I know. Yes, she does. I know. So we have a lot of questions. <laughs> okay, good. All right. I'm happy to answer all of your questions. Before we jump into those, I did want to ask both of you because last time we saw you was on season 15 mm -hmm. of The Real Housewives of Orange County. We got married. We're moving in together. Rick, you came from New York yep. and started working in Los Angeles. I did. So how have you been? Busy. Busy. Uh, Rick, Rick thinks he's busier now than he when he was working. When I was at Fox, yeah, yeah. I'm way busier. Because, you know, we're doing a lot of shows every week, seven, eight shows a week on YouTube and on Patreon.com, Rick and Kelly's show and the Daily Smash. And we're back and forth every week to the to the desert house that we're remodeling in Palm Desert. It's, it's a lot. That's pickleball pool party. Pickleball, pickleball party, party town. town. Party town. Yeah. yeah pickleball yeah. party town. It's incredible. Yeah. And we really have transformed this house from a dump, a dump yeah. to a, a, an incredible high-end resort. It's, it's beautiful. And we're going to start running it out and we're going to start selling pickleball paddles and balls and, and clothing down the line. And you yeah, know, Newport Beach, Orange County is very apparel driven. Like uh, we have Ruka, Billabong. I think you're wearing a Ruka shirt. Um, okay. My friend started that Pat Tenoring and he sold it for millions and millions of dollars to Billabong. And there, there are like, uh, we have uh, Vol Volcom, yeah. Volcom's here. Big, huge apparel uh, industry here in Orange County. So we think uh, there's, a, there's a, an opening for, for cool pickleball clothes. Apparel. Yeah. So we're doing merch. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're doing, yeah. Not we're, merch. I mean, we're going to be doing like, like, because there's not oh, really apparel, outfits. Not oh, yeah. 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 Like, there's going to be, there's, there's there's not really a pickleball apparel line. You know what I mean? Like, no. a set one. There will there's be a like tennis. Business. Like, people wear whatever they want. You, I feel like your mind is always going business. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're busy. Yeah. But we, busy. Bu we built our own pickleball court in the backyard of our house in the desert. And so. It's a passion, you know? Right. So you want to stick with your passions. Yeah. Okay, so fun fact. And yeah. I did want to ask too, since you left Fox News, right? And we started the Rick and Kelly show. Mm -hmm. How is that different? Well, it's really different for me. Like Kelly's always spoken her mind. She had the freedom to do that. I was a news reporter. So I, I had to keep it, you know, to the facts when I was reporting stories. And when I wasn't reporting stories, I couldn't share my personal opinion because you're not supposed to have one. Right. And Fox was very... Um, adamant about us being uh, careful on social media, not saying anything controversial, not doing anything controversial. Now all of a sudden I can say whatever I want. It's so liberating. And people are like, oh, you were a serious news reporter and now you're reporting on how covering housewives? How embarrassing. I'm like, embarrassed? I'm having the time of my life. Right. You know, it's fun. I get to work with my wife every day and, and do stuff that's not, it's not a terror attack. It's not a mass murder. It's not a war. It's not a hurricane. I can relax and you know, I kind of have fun with it. Right. Yeah. Right. And you know, there was this rumor and I did want to see if you could kind of address this a little bit. There was a rumor that you actually were removed from Fox because of how controversial your wife is. You married Kelly Dodd and then mm -hmm. Kelly says whatever she wants on the show, yeah. social media, you really kind of just say whatever you want anywhere. I, I say whatever I want. Yeah. yeah. You say whatever you want. It doesn't like, it does, it does Listen, get me in trouble. Anyway. I definitely got a, a couple of phone calls like, hey, can you tell your wife to stop saying X, Y, or Z? And I was no. Well, well, I don't think people, people think that you got fired. So I think oh. this is a time to like clarify well, exactly what happened. I, I was on my eighth contract, eight three-year deals. Okay. And I moved, I forced my move to California because I wanted to be with Kelly. I had to be with her. So I forced to move from New York. They didn't want me to leave New York. And when I got to LA, there were seven other reporters in there, including a guy who was a senior as I was, and was probably making as much or more. And I was one of the highest paid guys there, uh, uh, reporters there. So there was only really room, I think, for two of us in that bureau. And Trace, the other guy, was up for a job in New York, an anchor job. And if he had gotten that job, I think Fox absolutely would have just asked me, hey, can you, do you want to do the primetime shift? 
and be a fill in anchor in LA? And I would have said, yeah, but Trace didn't get the gig. So he was still there and they have, you know, six, seven other people who are making money reporting from there. And I had just sort of pushed my way in like, this guy's making a lot of money. You know, like, do we really need it? And so basically I kind of hastened my exit from the network by forcing a move to California. But if I stayed in New York, I probably would still be But on your the contract air. was up. My deal was up. And the truth is I was sick of having to run out the door every time there was a major incident or they needed me at the border or they needed me at a plane. So like, like, like Ukraine happened. They would have shipped him off to Ukraine. Yeah. And where, I could have been killed. Where, One of my colleagues was, was badly wounded and a cameraman was killed who I worked with many times. Awesome guy. Killed covering the war. Maybe. And they would have asked me to go. And I said, Kelly, what, what would you have said if they sent me to Ukraine? She goes, I would have told you to quit. Yeah. So because something dead bad happened to his Fox um, yeah, uh, yeah. co-workers, yeah. they one got blown up and then the other one got killed. Like that would have been him. So, you know, it was a, a divine intervention right. that they didn't renew his contract I mean, to be quite could, honest. It could have saved my life. It, it totally saved your life because that guy got blown up and the other guy died and he would have been with those guys. And you know, 24 years, I was a reporter for 35 years, 24 of them at Fox and it takes a toll on you. Right. You know, when you're always on call and you have to drop everything to go race out the door for days or weeks or even months at a time, it, it, it's grueling and it, and it takes a toll on your family and it's just... And he's 62 years yeah. old. It was like, about he's time not, it's, it, it wasn't, he was, he was done with it, to right. be quite honest. As, as a colleague of a former boss of mine told me after I left, he goes, you've been rained on enough. You don't need to be a reporter out in yeah. the field. I mean, you've been rained on enough. We'll, we will segue in, <laughs> in, into the Rick and Kelly show. And yeah. honestly... Two, people don't realize you can, especially when you do YouTube and podcasts, if you have that audience, which you both do, then you can make a lot of money. It's like not when people are like, oh, you're talking about housewives, so they're scoffing. I'm like, what are you doing? So, well, yeah, they're and, scoffing, but they don't understand how much money you can make. I don't think we're making make. as much as you are yet, yeah. but we're, no. we just started this thing like eight months ago right. like in earnest, and we're up to almost 25,000 subscribers in eight months, and we're you know gaining thousands by the month. So... You know, we're, we're very We get the confident. nicest comments on YouTube. Yeah, 99%. It is such, it's, the, it's just such a nice platform. It is and it isn't. Like, it's uh, a nice platform because the people that watch us genuinely like me. You know what I mean? Right. Where if I'm on, like, Twitter, it's all a bunch of trolls. Or even Instagram is, like, it feels like there's, like, bots coming after me, you know? But everybody that follows me or watches me on YouTube just has the nicest comments. It's, it's really nice. Which is kind of bringing me to my next point too. You have a lot of people, and Rick, you know this, you have a lot of people who slam you so hard for things that you say. I mean, you've had so many, you know, statements that you've had to apologize for, right? Yeah. For example. Which one? The, I, don't, I can't say it because of the algorithm, but the pandemic is God's way of thinning the herd and then okay. you, you got in trouble. Well, you know, okay, for, so let me talk about that. Okay. Can I talk about that? Because um, Megan, is said you know we're talking about that megan megan, megan king Kinnett, who's yeah. staying with us right. she's like well you can't say that even though it's totally true yeah she's like but you can't say that i'm like why can't i say that that is it was mostly the older people that died or somebody who had comorbidities or yeah, whatever not just old but sick sick they were already 90 sick. plus percent of the deaths were people who had multiple comorbidities they were already dying and they were, most of them, elderly. Most. We're not saying all. I mean, there's there was like a probably a 40 or whatever, and okay? We, but, but the thing is, it hit the elderly population first, right. right? So, in my mind, somebody said it's Darwin. Because when you hit an elderly age, you're not, you, you, you know, you're taking up resources. Uh, you know, the, the government has uh, Social Security, you know, that they have to take care of. Um, one of my friends in China, when I lived there, she said it was population control that you're getting, you know, because when you're older, you're not, you're, you're not making any money for society. Your, you know, your uh, bills, medical bills, you know, you're kind of um, a leech to society when you, and that's not, not like a, a leech, not a leech but maybe, maybe a, not a, a leech, drain. like a drain. A drain. Like you're we, taxing. We're all and, and not old. to say that everyone who's old should die. That's not what Kelly's no, no, saying no, no, at no, all. No, 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 no. Just no. that this, that's what, that's who was dying. Right. So primarily. like Darwin, right? Like, like, like God's, uh, it's like survival of the fittest. It's been here since the dawn of day, dawn of man, 
Somebody on my Instagram, I didn't say it, it was on my Instagram and somebody was like, you're killing people and blah, 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 blah. So I said it was God's way of thinning the herd because they were, when I saw them, it was like, it was like sick people. They're like the problem, heavy, overweight. I mean, that's, that's all true. The problem is. You she, can't she, she, say she, You can't say certain things out loud and Kelly did. And, and, and maybe people were thinking it, but everyone was shocked. How could you possibly say that out loud? But. But what she said really isn't that controversial when you break it down to, as she just did, but I every 100, 200 anybody. years, there's a plague. There's something that wipes out a big chunk of the population. Just look at history over the last thousand there's years. There's a Spanish flu. That's, that's what I was going to say, too, about you is that you have, when we talk about some of these moments that you go on social media or you say something, you have a lot of people that, Rick just made a great point, people who agree with you, who are afraid to say that, and right. then people who obviously would never say that, and they're like, no, I absolutely don't agree with you. But that is kind of... You know, but it I'm happens. Thinking. There is something where 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 it, it happens at the dawn of day. There was a Spanish flu. There's plagues. Every hundred years, there's some kind of virus that wipes out some kind of a population. Can I, can I just say... Can, can it leave? didn't mean to like hurt anybody. It wasn't... like stealing from people i wasn't like i was just saying what has happened since the dawn of day okay. of mankind like this is what happens and it wasn't like i was stealing from people i wasn't you know cheating the government it's like why are people such snowflakes like why are people so sensitive like what you can't say what what is actually the truth well you, what i wanted to say was that kelly has always been i think the most real of the housewives she, she doesn't have a, really have a filter. So sometimes she'll say things and I'll be like, wow, I can't believe you just said that out loud. But it makes so much sense. Like everything she says makes sense. And I don't think she meant any harm. Of course, you know, everyone, every loved one who dies, that's, that's horrible for the family. And nobody wants to lose anyone. But Kelly always says, we're all going to die, right? It's a certainty we're all going to die. Certain. So she's just, and then she's every, keeping and then, it and then, real. And then you get these people that go, well, I know someone that died of COVID. Well, I know somebody that died in a car accident. I know people that, I, does that mean I'm not going to go drive my car? Like, I know people that have died from many things. Does that mean that I'm going to be scared? Like, I know people that died of sushi from getting a bacterial infection. Am I going to stop eating sushi? You know, it's like, it's things like that where you're like, okay, why are people so sensitive? Why can't you, like, and say I'll, the truth? I'll add this. If she had said what she said then, now... I don't think there would have been anywhere near the uproar because everyone sort of changed their opinion about, but this was in the very early days of the pandemic. Right. So it was too soon in the eyes of most people. But I'm saying, <laughs> why am I getting like- Because you were, you were the only one willing to say it out loud. Yeah. That's it. So another comment that you made, and obviously we know that you had to talk about this um, after, when you were asked on the Real Housewives of Orange County season 15 reunion, you know, you were talking and you said, I am a black woman. I'm black. That's what you yeah, said. Yeah, I'm black. I'm black. Yes. So how do I'm you... I'm 6% black. Based on... I'm... I, 23 I, and me. 23 and me. Okay. Dude, she's a rainbow. So I'm 30% Native American. 30%. She's got Asian. My fa my grandma was from Jewish. the Navajo country. And people are like, oh, well, do you live on a reservation? Did your family live on... My grandma lived in a cattle ranch right next to a reservation. She married a... Spaniard, my great grand, my grandma, right? My gr my great grandma, my not my grandma, great grandma, and so I'm thirty percent Native American. But can I just say, Kelly does not identify as a black woman. What that was during an eight-hour Mexican, Mexican. But that was during an eight-hour reunion, but, 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 right? But, but no, but Andy Cohen said, "Do you identify as an African American woman?" I go, "No, I absolutely don't." But they didn't include that. Yes, in the they edit. did. Oh, they did. They did. Yeah. I said, I don't, I don't see people want to believe what they want to hear and they want to get mad. Okay. So I have 6% African American in my 23 and me. I've dated black guys. I have a lot of black friends. I don't know where this racist bull crap comes up. It's from, it's from Bronwyn. Okay. So, and then it was happened at the nice guy when I was talking to a black guy and I was married at the time and TMZ caught me. And that's when I buckled up because I was flirting with the black guy when I was married. Okay. So that was a whole other story. So it made it look like I was racist because they caught me and they're like, Oh, do you like black guys? Why would they say that? They saw me 
flirting with the black guy in there. I was married at the time. And so when I said, no, I don't know, I don't even know any black people. They turned that around and it made it look like I was racist because I said, I don't date black guys. Which I have, because I dated Eric Gordon from the Houston Rockets. But not no anymore. One knows that. Not no, not anymore, but back then. <laughs> but no one knows that. But anyway, so so when I said, like, the, when people were saying I'm black, I'm like, I, I'm a rainbow of things. Like, I'm not racist. I'm, I'm a Mexican. I have Asian. I have uh, a, a Native American. I have, I'm from Spain, my family. And I have 6% black. Which most people do have African American in them. He's ninety nine percent Oscar. Ninety nine point nine percent Oscar. Yeah. They're probably one hundred percent. But most of the people from Spain, they they have a lot of African in them. Like it just because it's so Spain's I, I, right. It's, the, 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 Africa's right by Spain, right? You know, right there. Okay. When Kelly yelled, "I'm black," I think what she was trying to say was, "I have black in me." Right. Who are you to come after me? You know, because because. The people who are coming after her are, you no, know, full well, white, hundred percent white, white. white, and she grew up Mexican and Native American, and has other blood in her. So, like, she is a rainbow. But and when, when Andy Cohen said, "Do you identify as a black person?" I said, "No, I don't," because I don't. Okay. But what I'm saying it, what I was, what I meant was, I have all that in me. Who are you, who's completely white, is to say I don't understand what racism is. Right. Because I do, because I'm Mexican and I grew up with all blonde hair and blue eyes and I was not, uh, I didn't fit into that. So I know what it's You've like. You've experienced it. I know, I've experienced it, just like you have, being yeah. Jewish. Yeah. So I want to move on a little bit from this topic because there's another, you know, and this is probably really sensitive, but we know that your daughter, Julie, lives with you mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. And then... Rick, we've seen with your daughter a little bit on social media, some back and forths with you and... Yeah, you stuck up for her. Yeah. So you, like, on your show, you stuck up for Veronica because I don't think you knew exactly what went down behind the scenes with her. And, and well, I, I had, just, I, just to be fair, I had a, I've had a few stepmoms and I had one that, and I explained to you on the phone... One that like terrorized me, right? And she did it for a sport. And okay, but this girl's head, 30, this 32 is... years old, right? So and, and she's I, not a child. I don't also want to like create a bigger rift or anything, but I am curious. You know, are there moments like where you wish that we could have that happy of family and everyone's of together? Or you we just are. That's all we've ever wanted, right? Yeah. You know, but but there were things that she was doing, and it didn't start with Kelly. It started before Kelly. Okay, we were butting heads for years. Okay. And your friends, like Teddy and all of them, they seen the way he, she has treated him. But again, I don't want to air a bunch of right, right, family of laundry. But we do want it to be. Back. But just so you know, this didn't start with Kelly. Okay. Um, and I think what happened with Kelly was that the two of us were on the same page, and so she may have tried to manipulate the situation. I was like, no, you can't act like that. So again, like there, there were a lot of a lot of things, that, well, and all I asked for was an just, apology. Can I, That's can, all I can asked I just for. let me just start off, okay? No, I, like, I don't want to detail the things that happened. Huh? I don't want to go down that road. Okay. I just don't yeah. want to do we it. We don't. Here. No, no, okay. of course, but we it, do want to because eventually. To your point, I do want a relationship right. with her. Of course, I do. She's you know my my only biological child. I love her, and I want us to be close, and I hope that we will be again soon. Of course. Okay. Well, you you you, you have uh, an adopted daughter. He didn't mean it like that because he loves his adopted daughter. Of course. Yeah. And she's African American. So when you get these you get these people that go, you're you're a white supremacist. First of all, it, it, these people are just idiotic because uh, <laughs> he's Jewish. I'm Mexican, and um, he adopted a black baby. And she's beautiful, and she's gorgeous, and yeah. we love her, and she's we we love Shoshana, and so for people to say that they don't even know what they're talking about. Well, that's they right. just that's like to a lot of idiots, idiots. yeah, a lot of idiots, lot of idiots, idiots, idiots yeah. Who, who just say the stupidest thing to try and mess. But with the you. thing of it is, is like, why does Bravo listen to that right. minutia of bullcrap? Well, like, I actually I have a great question for you, um, and I'll get into that in a second too because it's comparing you know, how Bravo responds with things that might be controversial on, you know, social media, but then also there are other housewives who have been arrested and charged and, you know, they yeah. still stay on the show. So we'll get into that in a second, but I did want to ask you too, Rick, do you find sometimes that 
you have yourself like having to defend what Kelly says? Like, do you find yourself defending a lot of yeah, I things think that come out? What I what I often find myself doing is is is, is helping her explain how okay. she feels about something. You know, I'm I, I'm a good writer, so a lot of times she'll say, "Hey, how how do I respond to this?" And I'll be like, "Well," and and I'll take her words. And I'll refine them, or I'll just you know, right? But he I mean, also is. Um, his parents are from. Uh, they're they're psychologists, they're doctors, and he has picked up that ability to speak and to talk to people in a way that like a therapist would. So where I'm like, oh, go f off, you know, like yeah. so I kind of stop and I'm like, hey, how do I respond to this in a nice, intelligent manner where I just go off the cuff and just. Yeah, she, the stupidest she, things. Right, and I try yeah. to. I, I encourage her to take a breath when when she gets attacked because Kelly is a fighter. You come after her. She, her instinct is to swing back harder, and so I try to to, to try this, Kelly. be a calming influence and and help her to uh, redirect that anger and and be more uh, positive in her approach or humorous, sarcastic, but not to get into a name calling situation. So that's sort of what we're working on, you know. And and listen. We are a team. Right. So yeah. I, I try to help her with that. And do I defend her? Of course I defend her. She's my wife. But I love her. But people don't understand her. And they misjudge her all the time. You know, I do have to kind of add to this too. You on the show and you on social media has been a completely different experience than us. You know, thank you for welcoming us into your home. But yeah. then this whole interaction of coming in here. And I can see a lot of moments where you are very misunderstood and you're like, I actually, I enjoy people. I like being around people. I can see there's a totally different side. And oh, she's terrific. She's a great hostess. She's very thoughtful. She's very generous. And she's a good friend. She has more friends than anyone I ever met in my life, Adam. This, this woman knows everyone and everyone wants to, to be her friend. So who all these critics are, I don't know because they have disappeared into the shadows. Anytime we go anywhere, even Home Depot or Costco, they're chasing her down the aisle to, to say hello and get a picture. It, it happens every day wherever we go. It does. You're like... <laughs> she's so totally cool about it. She's wearing makeup on, wearing a, ba a baseball cap. She takes photos with all, every day. Yeah. All right. So I want to kind of, now that I got to ask you about some of those things, I want to ask you a little bit about Real Housewives of Orange County. Since we're not on the show, right? What do you think about the show since you've left? Because we saw season 16. Now they're filming season 17. I know you have some inside info over here, but how do you feel about the show since you've left? Well, I think it was, um, I, well, I felt like I was attacked, okay, by Bravo and, and Andy Cohen. He said, oh, we're going to uh, revamp. We're going to do a uh, reboot. reboot. And... And he, when he did that, he's like, you're losing followers. I wasn't losing any followers. I mean, I am now, but I wasn't losing any followers then. And uh, he's like, people are, are writing to me saying that you're this and this and this and this and that. Are you going to be, a, you know, completely, you know, ter you know, I... They tried to blame they her. They tried to blame for, me for any issues the show was having. So, so they were still getting over a million viewers every okay, week. So, she was so and that, that's the thing, like. We only shot that season for five weeks. A normal season is three months. So, you know, it's like a whole semester of school is when we're filming, okay? Right. We only got five weeks and we filmed ourselves. I thought I did a pretty good job on that because everybody else had COVID and I was going, like, I wasn't scared of it because I, I you know, I, I was, I was, I just wasn't afraid of it and everybody else was. So they deemed me as being irresponsible. Um, they deemed me as, as, uh, uh, leaving my kid when that wasn't at all the case, like at all, like they try to paint me to look like I was but his, evil. His question was, how do you, what do you think of the show since you left? Oh, so well, the, the, what I'm saying that they deemed me as being an evil person, right? right. Like I was a villain. I was the worst possible person right. on and earth. And so, so, and I was bringing the whole branch and then and Andy Cohen said to me and he called me too and he said, it was your time on the sh on the show as on camera was good. It's your social media that made you look bad, right? Right. So I'm like, okay, uh, maybe I should have hired somebody to do my social media <laughs> like everybody else does. Well, like, maybe I should. Social media manager. Yeah, they, they do. They, 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 they do it. Yeah. Right. 
So in, in hindsight, I, sh I probably should have hired a, a somebody to just do my, my social media because, you know, I, I don't really like it anyway. Right. So, like, I should have done that. But hiring Heather, who is the most boring, plain, awful, uh, egotistical, just the worst person on earth, and you can ask Jeff Lewis, um, uh, it is, and then she put two cease and desist on me, and she told my all my friends around town that she was going to clean out my bank account. No, Terry said that. So, do I think it's boring? Yeah, I would. I would I'd rather watch paint dry. And and you know what? I don't care what Andy Cohen says. It's the delayed numbers. It's not just the delayed numbers because the, it, it, he tried to spin it. He, he tried to spin it. They had five of the worst rated shows in the history of the franchise. They kept breaking their own record last season with the worst rated show in the history of Orange County. And then the, the next week would be even worse. And maybe one week would bounce up a little bit. Look it up. It's at five times they were in like the thing in the seven. In the 700. Seven Never when I was on the show. Never always when I was on the show. Always one, over a million. One time last season, the her season, her last season, it was under a million. It was at 980 or something. Yeah. And now they, they they only had more than a million, I think, once that whole season. The show sucked without Kelly. Okay, and, that's and, my and, and I think, and I, I like Emily. I do. I like her, but she's not TV. She's not TV material. She's not. I like her. I think she's smart. I think she's great. But a lot of it's fake. What about Gina? I think she's the worst. I think she's the worst casted. Worst. I don't think there's anything entertaining about her. Her boyfriend's a dud. Her house is a dud. She doesn't have multiple houses. She doesn't have. Um, she's trying to do some fake skincare line, which is bullshit. Um. It, it's like she and she dresses like crap. Her posture is horrible. Like nobody wants to watch that. That's not something that, you know, she doesn't have really a good body. There's nothing to her that you want to aspire to be. What about Shannon Bedore? Do you well, like her on TV? Uh, I think she's entertaining, yeah. Okay. And cool. you know what? Shannon Bedore has a lot of ideas. She's in there. She knows to throw a party. She's good she, at her job. She's good at her job. And we like Shannon. We hang out with her. Yeah, no, but I think she's entertaining. Like, she's funny. Right. Gina's not funny. Gina, uh, Gina was uh, making uh, up Shannon, stuff all Shannon, last season. Shannon, making up fights. Like, yeah. just creating nonsense. Shannon, Shannon's smart. Gina's dumb. Like, there's just... Shannon knows how to dress. She, uh, Gina doesn't know how to dress. Uh, you know, uh, Shannon's worldly. Gina isn't worldly. Like, it's just... I don't understand or get why Gina is on the show. I just don't understand it. And do you, at this point, would you consider yourself, like in the Bravo universe, would you consider yourself canceled? Yes. I was canceled. Yes. And everybody else says it. Everybody. Everybody who's my fan knows I was canceled. I was canceled. Mm-hmm. Okay. But, yep. but she still gets written about almost every day. I never see Gina. I have I wake up every morning to a bunch of Google alerts, and it's mainly about from her. the it's from the left wing uh, stream media yeah, yeah. like Bustle, uh, the Heavy, yeah. um, uh, Monsters and Monsters Critics, and Critics, Reality Blur. Yeah. Do you think part of this has to do because I'm just wondering to pick your brain on this? Do you think part of this has to do with your political beliefs? I'm sure, of course. But I'm also a person who grew up Democrat. My parents were both Democrat. And I'm, I, I would consider myself moderate, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm not a far, I don't like the far right. I think they're, with the conspiracy theories, crazy. And I don't like the far left that are, and you see it, like if you see people that are still wearing masks outside, you know that they probably voted for Biden. Like they're, they, they, it's, <laughs> it's those kinds of people that you, you just, kind of know because they're they're scared and, and they, they listen and they're not and really independent thinkers where you know you see people who are like us or who are independent thinkers and are not scared that and I've lived in a communist country I know what go, what happens so I'm not a far right wing ring but I I, I think that I am more like have everything I, I'm more about being this I want every not not communism where I want everybody to be the same but I think things are so unfair to especially like us that who are hard working that you know um, we get taxed to death where people I think that we should have a flat tax yeah I think that everything that everything would be fair 
I believe in having fairness. That's I, all. I do too. And people think, oh, because I worked at Fox News, I must be a you know super conservative. I also grew up in a very liberal household. And I did grow more conservative as I got older. And working at Fox did open my eyes to some stuff. But like Kelly, I'm, I'm, I'm socially liberal, you know, yeah. physically conservative, socially liberal. I, you know, and, and, and I think we're just, you know, we're, we're, we're smart right. enough to see through the BS. And that's what apparently has gotten Kelly in but, trouble. But, but there's also a mindset. Like his daughter is, com she co considers herself a communist, and that's what she says. And when that whole thing came out, she was screaming, crying, everyone's dying. And I'm like, here, calm down. Like, nothing is going to happen to you. You're healthy. You're young. Not but it was like, you know, it was that, but then she would go protest and take the mask off. It was like, things like were just so hypocritical at that time. With Even if they were wearing masks, if they're shoulder to shoulder in a crowd of 10,000 people in the street, I mean, you're going to get sick from the guy next to you. That's going to happen. And, but, you know, it wasn't okay to go to a rally, but it was okay to go and, and march down the street with, with thousands of people. And it just, it was a double standard. And there's been a lot of hypocrisy from day one. And so, again, you know, Kelly, out, right? Kelly calls and I, it, out, I call it out, and she gets in trouble And for I it. get in trouble for it. Because, listen, the, the people that are watching Bravo, there's a, people don't realize there's a, a lot of people that, I mean, obviously, that I get tons and tons of DMs. You know, they said there was a a, a a boycott on me. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of people that think there's 77 million people that think like I do. I mean, I'm not far of like crazy right or anything like that. But there's a lot of people that think like I do and they're completely turned off. And that's why the numbers went down to 700,000. I don't think Bravo knows their audience per se. They think it's all like far left, woke, liberal agenda and, and, they, cater and, and they cater to that but there's also 77 million people half the country half the country just like i do necessarily think and getting way. politics involved because that was thomas kelly right. who said that that uh was heather was diabolical our, producer. He our was producer. producer he's the one who's a progressive left that was all about bronwyn and that bronwyn i don't even think she even knows what the heck she's talking about the girl is not she doesn't even have a bachelor's degree She's not worldly. She's had kids since she was 19 years old. She's not particularly bright, but it's that agenda that he wanted and her, his darling. And he yeah. made me look like I was like a whack, a whack job. Right. They tried to paint you. Yeah. That corner, Do you think that was part of the behind the scenes too? Like with production? Of course. Yeah. Yes. Because I, 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 I to was meet that agenda. to meet that agenda. Yeah. I, you know, I'm all for equality. Okay, I'm all for equality. I think, I think that you know the Black Lives Matter thing was that's great. You know, we should help any kind of community that's like suffering, Indian, you know, like. But don't have a systematic racism where it was like it was. It, they were making it. They kept going and going and going and going and going. That well, whole BLM I mean, they, was they, a scam, and it, it's 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 they it's, misappropriated allegedly millions of dollars in funds, and the money wasn't going where I think most people who were donating thought it was going to go. And there were people who were acting out, whether they were part of the movement or not, they're acting out in the name of the movement or at, at events that the movement was holding, and burning and looting and destroying. And and so I think that was the other thing that Kelly was reacting to was like, well, what's why doesn't anyone care about this? Why is this okay? Because everyone kind of said, well, you know, it's just a fringe element. It's just a, a small group of people. Well, they're burning down our cities. They're breaking into Neiman Marcus. Can we just stop this? Yeah. You can do a peaceful protest, but don't tolerate this kind of behavior. And it made it's me out of control. Painted me out to look, and look like at, look, at, look at crime now. Like this whole idea of let's just give everyone a break from now on is leading to, you know, where they're not enforcing laws. And people are, are stealing with impunity. They're, they're, they, the crime rate is that is going up in almost every major city. And you know we saw the we saw that happen. When you say, okay, go ahead and do whatever you want, what do you think is going to happen? When you say, oh, defund the police, we don't want the police to get out of their cars anymore. What do you think is going to happen? People know they're not going to get punished. They're going to go. They're going to steal stuff. And not that 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 you know that all cops are good. I mean, there's always a bad apple in in the mix. You know what I mean? Like what that guy did to George Floyd was horrible. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that you can go and 
break into uh, shops and, and steal and whatever they want. want. That is that that that's not that 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 that's like anarchy. Exactly, that's what it is. Okay, and you know, I want to since we're talking about Real Housewives of Orange County too, and you know, obviously some of your beliefs and the things that you said, you think that that could be potentially why you feel canceled, right? Yeah. But now we have, I believe she's one of your friends, Tamara Judge, who's returning to the show. Mm -hmm. First, what do you think about that? I think it's a, a smart move. Okay. Bring um, Tamara back. I do. I think it's a, I think it's a, a, a smart move. But if you're going to bring Tamara back, you should bring me and Vicky back. Right. Because, I mean, if we... Uh, there was the, the ratings were high when the three of us. They were all on. have strong followings. They yeah. all know. They're all good on the on TV. They're all good on the show. They 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 know. Uh, I mean, they're they're more real than any of the women who are, are on there now. Trying to pre-produce the story. The thing the thing of it is too, and and I'm not going to name names, but um, that I'm friends with are on the show. They're, they're, they have only production company now. So MGM bought Evolution. So they got their own people in there. So it's all. What I loved about being on this show, it was that you knew the camera people, you were, you were family with them, and you worked with them all the time, and it was always the same people. It's all new people now. So, they, you know, the people that are on the show, they're like, it's like going to a new job. It's weird. Like, it's just weird. Like, it's not the same kind of element of, it's more like a job. Right. So they're going into a into they're, they're a, clocking in. They're clocking in, clocking out, and that's it. It's that's not it. like it's like, it real. Right. Right. And, and so I can't name names, <laughs> but that's that's what that's what's happening now. And you don't think that's going to play out for the season? Well, that's the thing is, especially after you know everybody was stuck in their houses for so long, and they're sitting there watching reality TV. The fans got really smart, mm -hmm. and they started dissecting things, and they see like, for example, you know Noella, who was on only for one season, she came on like she was. Very orchestrated, like she's like Ron pre-producing these yep. storylines. Ron yeah. was that way. Yeah, and so people, the fans will read through that. But since you brought up Vicky, um, you did announce that you were starting a podcast with mm -hmm. her. Are we still doing that? We don't know. She travels a lot. She really wants to do it, but it's hard to pin her down. It's she's hard. in Mexico all the time. Right? Yeah. She has a place there. Ports of America. So we're trying to figure out I, the two of them sitting together is what we want to do. But right. she's not here. Zoom call is not going to have the same flavor. Yeah, so the Zoom call. Even like, like Teddy and, and Tamara do the Zoom calls. The but two, two's in a pod. I, I, don't, I don't want to watch that because I like something that's like this together. You right. know what I mean? I, I just, you know, I don't like when, when Andy Cohen had his reunion with the four squares, it just doesn't have the oomph. Right. As, you know, and I don't think, um, I, and I'm not discounting Teddy, two teas in a pie, I think it's great. I just don't want to watch that. If you- I'll well, listen to it, but I don't want to watch it. You know what right. I mean? Well, and to that point too, when we first spoke about, you know, doing this interview in the first place, I live on the other side of the United States, yeah. right? And yeah. I was like, no, this has to be, I knew there were going to be some moments in this conversation. I'm like, we have to do this in person because I feel the same way. I, I think that the Zoom calls don't have the same effect. Right. But if you did do a podcast, unless you don't want to give too much away, if you did do a podcast with Vicky, Tamara spoke about on Two Teas in a Pod. She's like, I don't know what the concept would be, but well, it would be doing... it wouldn't be just Housewives. Okay, so okay. Rick and I do. So if it was, we talked about this, Vicky and I, right, and. Tamara and Teddy, all they talk about is reality TV. And, and, and that's what Vicky said. I don't want to sit down and spend all my time watching TV and then reporting on it. I just don't want that. So what we would do is we would probably do fun fun facts. We would do fashion. Okay. We would do cooking. Oh, like lifestyle. Things, lifestyle yes. stuff. Right. Um, how to turn your IRA into, you know, being a moneymaker for you. Or, you know, like financial insurance things, questions, insurance questions. And so the two of them have a great dynamic together. And they yeah. did an interview on our show, the Rick and Kelly show. And it, was, it, it got us a lot of subscribers because people want to see those two together. And they miss her on TV. So She's just we're hoping really that we can funny. Out. And um, uh, Vicky's just, I, I, she's just a really funny person. You know, she, she's just, she doesn't have like, you know, like Vicky, like Tamara goes, she always just says something rude all the time. I'm like, you say things that are rude, Tamara. Like, you know, she was like, I don't know what they have to talk about. What do you mean? Have you ever listened to Rick? And like, we don't just do recaps on Beverly Hills. People ask me to do them. Right. Like people want me to, to like, 
to recap it. And then the people get mad if I don't say a certain thing. Like, do you, going back to, I want to talk about Heather DeBro really quick because I believe you went on and said that Emily texted you about Heather pushing one of the producers the, mm-hmm. or the cameraman, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So, I showed the text. So we still are trying to figure out because Heather swears that never happened. Do you still believe that it did? Well, Emily told me it did, but Emily said she didn't see it. Oh, okay. 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 Thomas Kelly calls me and he tells me and Shannon and Tamara that happened. Okay. Okay. That he, that she shoved him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That she shoved him. Yeah. Okay. And you could see her putting her hand on the camera lens. That. But they, they didn't get the other stuff of them like freaking right. out. Right. They, she did. Clearly she was pissed off. Right. And she was lashing out at people around her. And she was trying to shut it all down. Cameras down. Who says cameras down? Who thinks they have. The, the, the control over Bravo, Bravo, Bravo. what housewife? She does. But she did not want to film it. And then I said to Tamara, I go, um, she was like, yeah, I would love for you to come to one of my parties. She was, but uh, Heather would get up and turn and walk away. And she's chicken shit, you know? Like, she, I would never do that. I right. wouldn't go and even give any of my time for free to Bravo. I just wouldn't do that. Everyone wants me to be on, a, on, a sh- on that show to confront her like everybody wants that like but well, Bravo was smart they would they would bring her back because she would be the perfect foil she would be she would maybe you're bring just on us oh no I think they hate me oh okay well I, you know what no I think they there, hate there are me. enough people who want you and back. you know what honestly it's it's funny um all the my co-workers and everybody from around all of them they're like it's like an icky like it's like an icky feeling to get back because it's like you're constantly on guard, you're playing chess. There's you're it's um it's not it's not a it's not a good feeling thing on these shows. It's right. not fun. It's well, a lot of people say I think it was even Pedro Parks who said that it's um it can be like traumatic. Traumatic and, like gives you like PTSD it and does. Shuddering and yeah. You know, I did want to also bring this up too because again on social media you were fined because you posted a photo in a drunk wives matter hat. Right, mm-hmm. but I had someone, one of my subscribers, ask, "You were fined for sixteen thousand mm-hmm. dollars for wearing this hat, while Lisa Rinna is out here claiming that one of her castmates is a homophobic, narcissistic, racist." And I know it's you can't compare the two, but my point is, is I know for a fact you, when you are a contracted housewife, you have to be a certain way on social media. You can't say whatever you want. I never got that on my contract. No. No. So I know I've had conversations with some of the Salt Lake City housewives and they're allowed to talk about the shows, but I was under the impression. Well, no, it's, it's fighting. It's fighting amongst each other. Right. They don't want that. Okay. So they, they don't have it in there. I asked them, I said, well, I mean, I caused them. It wasn't just the drug wives matter. That was the hugest. That's when they went like crazy on me because yeah. someone gave me a drunk wives matter hat and they called me hysterical. Like I was going to be fired right then and there that I caused a, such an uproar because and, they put so much s- stock into this, like, like agenda, agenda. Like, it, it, she like, was at, a, at her wedding shower and she had all kinds of gifts. And one of them was a hat. She put it on. She posed it. It was, a, it was a joke. It was, you know, satire. It's drunk wives matter. She's on the housewives and she's drunk all the time. Like the fact that people went nuts over that. It's just like, it's ridiculous, okay? Do you think there's double standards for some of the Bravo talent? Of course. Okay. Don't you? I mean... Well, but, but, but we don't right? know if Rena was was fine. She might have been fine for saying that and doing that. She might have gotten a fine for 16000 or twenty five. We don't know. She might be fired after this season. Right. Or may quit. She might just be, she, be done with it. She might quit. All right. So I doubt it. She would quit. She's making an over like a million bucks or like $800,000 a year. Why would she quit for working six months out of the year? So you don't quit these jobs. No. It's it's like it's easy like money. being a stripper or a prostitute. It's easy money. It's like <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> How do you know? I don't know. I've never been, but if I ever had like you know I mean, if I had the body. Oh you do. No. I, oh, yeah. I'm going to because I know that we're very busy and we have um, other stuff going on today. So I'm gonna do a lightning round with you really quick and okay. just get your opinion. Just super fast for you. I'm going to get myself in trouble. Do you think that you were let go in order to bring Heather DeBro back on? Yes. What would you say that the most misunderstood thing is about you? That I'm heartless. Okay. Since Taylor Armstrong crossed over 
to the Real Housewives of Orange County, if you could appear on another franchise, which one would it be? Uh, New York. Okay. Who are your top three favorite housewives? Uh, Ramona, Shannon, and uh, Vicky. If you could bring back anybody aside from yourself to the Real Housewives of Orange County, who would it be? Vicky. Who are your least favorite housewives? Three least favorite. Uh, Bronwyn, number one. Uh, Peggy Solihan, number two, and uh, Heather Debro. Well, Heather Debro would be number one. Yeah, I was just Heather say. Debro. Well, Heather Debro would be number one. Ron would be number two. Yeah. And three would be Peggy Solihan. But it's pretty close, I think. Yeah. Vegas housewife you've ever met. The Vegas? Yeah. Heather Debro. Heather Debro. Okay. How would you say that your life is different from leaving the Real Housewives? Uh, it's calmer. Okay. It's. Uh, I feel like my life is. Well, I get to travel more. I get to do more things. Uh, I get to focus more on like building things, like doing wow, things, our house, projects. And projects, and things like that. You still keep busy. And I get to like work for myself. Right. Like I love that. Even though I'm starting off like slowly. Well, you have to start somewhere. Yeah, I have to start somewhere. It's um, it's really nice to like not have people like, oh, you're doing this wrong, or you're doing that wrong, or you know, you can't post that, or you can't do that. Having Big Brother on top of you, like telling you, you know, yeah, it, it's it's freeing. I feel like I'm more free. Yeah. If you were asked to return to the show, would you? Um, it depends on how much money I would be making. Would you be open to that? I I would, but again, it it also depends on how well we're doing away from the show because right. our our business is is building, and in a year we could be in a position where we don't need to do anything else, and that's sort of our goal. And you by the way, more than. Yeah, you know, it, it, right. If I was making more than the housewives, there's absolutely no way I would do the show again. You know, they laughed at Denise Richards and she's like, let me join OnlyFans. I'm making more than all of you now. Yeah, so, it's true. You know, okay. So for you, this was another question that I got from a subscriber. Okay. How do you reconcile the nature and extent of Bravo's support for housewives with actual felony convictions being able to stay on the show as compared to you being fired? How much do you think public opinion versus favoritism plays into that decision? That's a good question. That's a great question. You have smart but you talk viewers. About, you talk about that all the time, about how all these women have criminal convictions or criminal charges and they're still on the show. Well, that's because Bravo is a business. They don't care. You think they care about any of us? They don't. And it, it's uh they're exploiting this is what it is it, it's it's exploit and and they it drives ratings they're a business and when you don't have their agenda or you're not on board they cancel you or they fire you because they don't like what you have to say i don't know why i mean i thought we were in america i thought we were allowed to have a share of opinions and share thoughts and it didn't have to be one way or another like that's what i thought it was like i think that they keep controversial figures on as long as they possibly can as they feel they can in order to drive ratings okay. and certain things in their opinion i guess are less egregious than others what kelly said in their mind was they couldn't they couldn't keep her on the show but someone who's been accused of something but not convicted they could always say well you know it's just a charge right now they're not they're not convicted Let's right. wait and let's let the legal process. Well, Teresa out. Judas ended up spending time in prison, so she was convicted technically. Yeah, and, right. She was. Know, they, well, she lied. They kept her. Yeah. Yeah. So certain things, certain crimes, apparently are okay. Right. Right. But certain words are not. Yeah, words, words are not. Mm -hmm. Do you personally think that you're one of Andy Cohen's least favorite housewives? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. You think he likes you, but he's afraid to say he likes yeah, you? Yeah, I do. I think so. He's like, he'll call me or like, like well, he'll text me. And he sent a nice card. Like he, sent a nice, he, sent me, he, he sent me a nice card. And I, I don't really think, and you know, when he was coming after me hard, I think he felt that pressure from Bravo. Right. Okay, Cause he's, he doesn't work for Bravo. He, he's his own independent contractor. Um, but he, you know, he, he, Oh, he guess he does work for Bravo, but he... he I agree with you that he felt pressure then. He that felt pressure. He goes, I'm sorry. Like, he's like, I'm sorry. Like They I'm, were giving a small group a lot of weight. And that group was, was very vocal about Kelly. So I think... It like that Bravo him. historian, that whack job. You know, I was with Emily, who voted for Trump. I never voted for Trump, but Emily did. She, she's on the show still. Uh -huh. But she just keeps quiet. 
her and her girlfriend, her girlfriend went like this in that, that Bravo historian, Samantha Bush. She attacked me. She came after me. She wanted to cancel me. Andy Cohen had her on the show. I'm like, what is this? It yeah. was weird. It was a group all about photo, all about the tea. All about the tea. They came after my daughter. They 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 they. I mean, if you read all about the tea, Bravo had, and I would call them like, I'm gonna sue them. They would call them say, hey, they have they have them. Bravo has all about the tea. The highlight the highlights uh, posts that, they, that they put in. Like they give them weight. I'm like, what is this? Mm -hmm. It's kind of strange. Like. Do they have these group of people that this small little minute group that they listen to? Because there's so many people that think like I do that obviously the ratings are down in the tankers, but they pay so much attention to these weirdos. There was a much larger group who were upset enough about Kelly being taken off the show that they stopped watching than the size of the group that was claiming it was a boycott and they weren't going to watch because she was on the show. The numbers went down when she left. What does that tell you? People were watching for Kelly. You're saying, listen to the numbers. Listen to yeah. the numbers. Numbers don't lie. All right. So to, I like to end off on a positive note. And we have a lot going on. We have the Rick and Kelly show. We apparently have Pickleball Pool Party. Mercy no, Pickleball Party, party town. town. Yes, Party pickleball Town. Party Town. And we're building, you know, our our house in Palm Desert. Yeah. We have a lot going on. Yeah. And I like to end on a positive note. So, when it comes to Erica Girardi on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, do you think that she had any idea of what her husband was doing? <laughs> um, I, I, she's not dumb. I think she knew. You think she knew? Mm -hmm. I just wanted, that was my own question. I, I just don't think she paid attention to it. I think she knew that they set up this company and all this money was funneling. I mean, I mean, she's not an idiot. Like, she's not stupid. Well, can I weigh in? Yeah. I don't necessarily believe she knew or wanted to know where the money was coming from. All she cared about was that she was getting the money. I don't know that she knew the minutia of, of, of the inner workings of Girardi Keats and she knew that they were, that he was diverting funds allegedly from action and victims and spending it on his way. But I don't think she wanted to know. Right. What, I, what bothers me about her behavior now is that she's not willing to sympathize or do real things to make it right. She just keeps saying, you know, oh, let's not All I care about is money. <sighs> Let's let the judge decide. Let let's the let the decide. judge decide on what's going on here. I think I would keep covering this when I first arrived with everybody. Yeah. You, yeah, you're just, okay. All yeah, right. Let's go. So, now, obviously, Y'all I care about, about is me. I mean, listen, at this point, <laughs> well, I feel like we covered so much, and this was, I, it did not let me down Good. as far as, like, a conversation that I it knew. It was worth the trip? Is that what you're saying? It was worth you the came trip. came all the way over here. We're going to take you to the quiet woman tonight. Now we're going to the quiet woman, so, Rick. Kelly, yeah. Thank you so much for joining so, me. Yeah. I'm so glad you came out here. Yes. I to see yeah. County. The first time we talked to you, like, who is this up and Adam? I heard he's a liberal whack job. <laughs> well, people told us, people warned us about My you. My mom watches you. You've been you. criticizing her and, 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 you know, and coming after Yeah, her. they're coming after me saying I'm the wicked uh, stepmom. And I get where you came from. Right. However. I didn't say wicked stepmom. But yeah, okay, it was something along those lines. I was questioning, yeah. Yeah, that I had a stepmom that, first of all, his daughter's 32 years old. Right. Okay, she's an adult. I already had Jolie by then. I already owned like four houses by the time I was in my 30s. Right. Th at that age. You're not a kid. Right. Okay, like, and I want to turn out and say, I think it would be nice if Veronica reached out to us and ha tried to have a conversation with us. Yeah. You know, like positive. A, a positive conversation. You know, I mean, she's going to have kids pretty soon, I hope. And, he wants to be a part of his, you know, grandchild's life, you know? And I'm sure after this, too, I'm sure she's going to see this. So we're rooting for it. We're rooting okay. for the thank family you. to come yeah. back together. Thank this was a great conversation. Yeah. And again, thank you guys so yeah. much. Thank you. Thank you.